Hello everyone and welcome back to another video with On Point Politics and today we're going to be looking at my updated forecast for the 2024 presidential election. Make sure to hit the like button to subscribe if you want more content just like this. Only 22% of you guys are subscribed so make sure to go ahead and do so. Comment down below to help us out with the algorithm and follow me on X at On Point Politics in all lowercase. Over there I give a little bit more detailed analysis on certain election things so make sure to follow me on x as well in the description down below and so looking at this guys donald trump is the favorite of about 70 percent odds to kamala harris is roughly 30 percent in the electoral college to win the election we see donald trump with 313 electoral college votes to harris's 225 electoral college votes harris is currently down by quite a bit in the national popular vote if we look at my polling average which essentially reweighs all of the polling data by a target electorate we have now moved to an r plus one electorate because pollsters like atlas intel which tend to be the more accurate pollster in the united states they were dead on in 2020 we have moved to their electorate because of the fact that when we apply that electorate to the 2020 average that we retrospectively created to test our current average now ends up giving us a biden plus 5.1 average when biden won the popular vote by around roughly you know four and a half points so that average would have been more accurate than you know whatever rcp or 538 would have given you and so even now what i've also done for my modeling We've also applied a new demographic model, which essentially combines the modeled results from the latest Atlas, Rasmussen, Big Data Poll, and my own estimates in the Electoral College through 538 modeling. And when we plug all of these accurate people in, we get a victory that is somewhat similar to what the other two columns in the forecast have. And what this does is it kind of helps me kind of ground the results. It adds a third, you know, filter in the system, which can kind of help because we also have my own polling averages slash estimates of the election. We have the trend model plus the popular vote predictor as well as the demographic modeling. So when we basically average all those out and there are weights applied to these, which were designed to essentially create a more accurate 2020 result by state, which my model would have predicted a 306 electoral college win for incumbent president joe biden back in 2020 these were the actual results this would have been the results of my previous election and when we plug in the new state polls that i had done the new state averages that i retrospectively created the model actually ends up being to the left of this by the way so that's also something really interesting to take into account and so when looking at that, the fact that my model was more accurate than any other model or forecaster from 2020, the fact that I'm using the same processes as right now currently shows Donald Trump very easily knocking this out of the park. And if you look at the averages from 538 and RCP, Trump is performing about six points better this time around than last time. And right now, my average has him performing about a little bit over seven points more you know than 2020 and that could be explained due to 538 now just letting anybody into the average because they have somebody new uh, named g elliott morris nate silver is currently no longer the head of 538 so technically they have no prehistoric track record now but considering how left he was when he ran the economist considering how he's just letting in any pollster into the average i could probably even add a point more error to their aggregate just because of that and so when looking at all that data donald trump is performing six points better in both the rcp and the 538 average and my average has him doing seven points better than before and so that is pretty interesting to take into account and my average would have been more accurate than theirs and my state modeling would have been better than both of theirs combined and so now looking at my forecast i mean donald trump is just running away with this race you know it's not like last time where yes donald trump was catching up to hillary clinton was catching up to joe biden he was the one in the underdog position joe biden was in the driver's seat same thing with hillary clinton they were in control unfortunately for hillary clinton she lost control but biden effectively the whole cycle was in control and could frame the narrative around him 
Now Trump is the one in control and can frame the narrative himself. And that's why he's been so effective leading in the popular vote. Donald Trump was leading against Joe Biden in my retrospective average against Biden by around seven points on July 21st, which is about what I had as my election forecast prediction. And so even if you compared the polling averages to back then, when you looked at RCP, Trump was pulling ahead at like three points ahead of Joe Biden, even pulling ahead by four points in the RCP aggregate. And that's a 12 point improvement from 2020 and what do you know if you look at four and a half for biden you apply 12 points to that that's a seven and a half to eight and a half point popular vote for donald trump same thing for 538 538 had donald trump up by two three points give or take and they had biden up 8.4 percent so that also is a 12 11 point difference so if you would have applied that difference back then it still would have showed a popular vote that i was forecasting back then and the fact that they dropped joe biden out of the race basically assures me that i would have been accurate in my assessment of the electoral college and that he really was down in minnesota he really was down in new mexico virginia new hampshire he really was in big trouble and so now, you know, they say, oh, well, you know, Harris has improved. And yes, she improved because she picked up a lot of Democrat voters who were going to vote third party. That's what happened or picked up a lot of undecided. She did not flip anybody from Donald Trump to Kamala Harris. If anything, Donald Trump actually was able to get voters from Harris being the nominee because he was polling at 46 percent in that average with an R plus one electorate. And with this electorate, he's polling at around 48, 49 percent, which is higher than what he got last time or in both elections, actually. And so looking at this electoral college, we see that Donald Trump is performing well in his 2020 states. Uh, overall, I mean, he's doing fairly good. He's adding Kansas into the safe column now, South Carolina. He's adding uh, Nebraska's first into the safe column, adding Alaska, adding Maine, as well as adding Iowa and Ohio into his safe column, which gives him 149 safe electoral college votes in my forecast. I mean, California now is still safe, but it is now only, you know, a 20 something point win. It's not a huge victory. I mean, Harris is winning it a little bit over 20 give or take probably like about 21 points give or take hawaii is like an 18 point win uh, joe biden won the state by 29 so the state's been trending to the right and it seems like it's going to continue to trend to the right as well i mean dc maryland massachusetts and vermont are also in the safe column in this forecast they're just too blue for them to be shifting to the right as much as some other states are and these are kind of trending to the left even though donald trump is doing very well in the electoral college but he has more safe states than Kamala Harris does now. And looking at Texas, Florida, I mean, you're talking about double-digit victories in both states. I mean, you're talking about a, basically a 14-point win in Texas and about 11 or 12 in Florida. I mean, he is just killing it in these states. And Florida is starting to count mail-in votes. We don't have enough data to make any assumptions yet. But looking at the other swing states, like North Carolina, I mean, if we pull up uh, Connor K stuff, we can actually go ahead and, and pull up Connor K. I'm going to, this was the 2020, so this was the final request, mail-in ballot request for the Democrats in North Carolina in 2020. This is what that map looks like right now, as of the, the 15th of September. So you're going from this map in 2020 being the final request margin for the Democrats to this. And so it's like, it's looking real bad. I mean, they're eroding here in some of the blue counties. And when you look at some analysis uh, done by uh, data analyst Connor K, you guys should definitely check him out. What's interesting is that in the redder areas, it's new registered Republicans coming out to vote and the same Republicans from last time. But the reason why the Democrat numbers are down is because you see a lot of Democrats now being unaffiliated. Like that's what it is. There are way more unaffiliated voters this time than last time. And so the only explanation for that is that they're just switching to Republican. Like it really, it makes it, it makes sense. If you see those people now going from Democrat to unaffiliated, who are they gonna break for this cycle? I mean, not all of them are gonna break, you know, Democrat or Republican, but certainly a decent amount of them, the parts where Democrats are eroding the most 
are actually in the very, very deep blue county. So again, not really a great look for you know Kamala Harris. It's really not. It's it's looking really, really bad. I mean, you're talking about look at that ten point fall off from where it was four years back on this day. Republicans are up four points, almost five, by the way. So again, not a great look. It's really, really, really not a great look at all, guys. Very bad stuff. So, North Carolina, in my forecast, is about roughly almost an eight-point victory in the forecast. I mean, that is, it's an impressive win, and it would it would be a shift uh, of about a seven-point shift in the state of North Carolina, which, funny enough, North Carolina has not been trending anywhere the past two cycles. It's actually been a stagnant state at the national level. Yes, it got bluer in 2020, but it moved with the popular vote. And the same thing in 2016. And so if that continues, this will match the seven point something shift in the popular vote that I'm actually predicting. The state of North Carolina hasn't trended anywhere. And it seems to be the case that that won't happen again. If anything, it trends half a point right. But the fact that I have an eight-point victory in North Carolina makes me confident in the rest of my forecast because the state has basically been voting six points to the right of the nation for a pretty long time, give or take. It's been doing it for a long time now. So it would make perfect sense for that to be the case. If North Carolina, if Trump's improving by seven points, a three-point popular vote victory would actually make perfect sense. Georgia, the ballot request there are more white now than what they were in 2020. There's a lot less of them, which isn't good for them either. And they're, it's just way, way, it's way more white. We don't have the exact numbers for Republican or Democrat, but they're more white and there's way less of them, like far less. So that's not good either in Georgia. And I'm starting to become very, very wary of Harris's chances here. I don't think she's really got a shot in Georgia because on average, she's performing five to 10 points worse with Hispanic and African-American voters in all of the polling data in margin and in the actual share of the vote. I mean, she's averaging like 70, 75 percent of the black vote nationwide. I mean, that's not good enough. It's not good enough to win Georgia. And black turnout is certainly going to be lower than last time. And any little fall off is really going to hurt her in Georgia. So I'd say that Trump really got about a 90% chance in Georgia to win it. I mean, he, he should, uh, we use like a certain type of system in our forecasting. He's got about a 65% chance. But if I were assigning these odds myself, I'd say he's got an 85, 90% chance to win Georgia. I really can't see how she does. And in Arizona, Trump's actually performing better than in Georgia because of immigration and Hispanics. And what we've seen from our data, and we're aligning with Valuetainment, Tom Ellsworth and Amy Dangerfield are at Valuetainment. They're kind of looking at their own stuff. Rasmussen reports has Trump up by two to three. Alice Intel has Trump up through two to three points. You know, Robert Barnes and Richard are all all of everything from everybody. Those people are pointing to Arizona being a mid single digit victory for Donald Trump. And, and even so Cal's own poll from back then when it was Trump v. Biden had Trump up five points in Maricopa. If you shift Maricopa alone, it's already a four point victory for Trump. And we, again, we don't have a new poll, but the fact that Biden was already polling that bad leads me to believe that my 8.9 point victory in Arizona for Trump when it was for Biden really wasn't that out of the question. And right now it seems like he's on track to win it by about seven. Trump's on track to win Georgia by about six. Nevada, it's a similar thing to uh, roughly a similar uh, margin there. Uh, it's one of the more closer red states. I mean, Nevada, it's probably like a five and a half, six point win, give or take in Nevada. Wisconsin and Pennsylvania, both six point victories here. And this is what I want to talk about because Wisconsin, th this is the funny part. Polling's always been really bad in Wisconsin, right? It's always been bad and it's still bad because when I look at the samples for the party ID, they still have Democrats ahead. And the electorate last time was R plus five, and it's not going to be bluer than that. I can almost guarantee that because it shifted six points from 2016. 
So it's like, how in the world is Wisconsin going to vote to the left of Pennsylvania and Michigan by multiple points like they always say it will, and then it never does. It always votes to the right of both states. And what's funny is when you look at my polling average for Wisconsin, it's a two-point improvement. My polling average has up Trump like about five. My 2020 polling average has Biden up about two. So that would have been the most accurate polling average in Wisconsin. And Trump now is up by about 5.8%. That's a seven-point improvement. And in the RCP aggregate, they had about an up six and a half. And now Harris is up roughly about a point or so in the RCP average there. So that's a five-point improvement, right, from that shift. 538 had Biden up 8.4%. Now they have Harris up by like about two and a half in Wisconsin. That's a also about a five six point improvement in the state so my shifts in my polling aggregates are the same as theirs except i'm weighing for the party id and all the polling and donald trump is very comfortably ahead in wisconsin i mean i can't understand how people don't see this he is up in wisconsin by several points pennsylvania it's the same thing and we even have new data to prove this i mean look at pennsylvania guys these like look at this the data request with the final ones, 50 days before the election, a million Democrat votes, about 1.1 mil, right? About 1.1 mil. And looking at this now, the Democrats have lost a lead. They lost the lead of about 300 and something thousand votes in the mail-in ballot request. Republicans are already about to beat the record from 2020 in the mail-in ballot request. Democrats are just completely missing from this. There's a bunch of Democrats that are just non-existent, which is insane. If Republicans in mail-in data are doing better than 2020 in the raw vote share, Donald Trump's probably going to get more votes in Pennsylvania than he did in 2020. And there's just a bunch of Democrat ballots not there, and it's because Harris has a base problem, and when you look at this and you apply the math and you say, okay, let's say that there's about 250,000 votes that are just missing from Harris's column now, that's a three-point victory in Pennsylvania, and that's not even including what Trump could possibly net from the election day vote. So a four- to six-point win in Pennsylvania is totally on the table, and let's say that it's a four-point win or a five-point win. I still would have been the most accurate forecaster regardless, and I'm even adjusting my demographic model to include everybody including myself and it's still to the left of the previous demographic model trump is still up in wisconsin pennsylvania by multiple points he's still up by multiple points in all the swing states again oregon washington colorado illinois connecticut new jersey delaware rhode island new york again the polling errors here are always bad too i mean they're they're really bad in washington oregon the polling errors there are horrible including uh, Illinois, the polling errors are, well, it's a little bit iffy. Depends on the poll that you look at. The aggregate is okay for the most part. Illinois and Colorado actually undersampled Joe Biden last time, but like the Northeast, the polls there are horrendous. You're talking about a six point polling error in New York, a few points in a lot of those other Northeastern states. And Maine's first, I mean, that's going to be likely now. And so that only leaves a couple of lean states. And right now, Michigan Trump is winning that state pretty comfortably. I mean, all the polls that had Biden doing, you know, five to six points better than his actual result was now have Trump either up one, tied or Harris up one. So what does that tell you about the state? My three to four point victory is on the table for Trump. And again, my polling average actually has Harris up uh, in the state. But if anything, there's a good chance I may even be underestimating how much the electorate's going to shift to the right. There's a good chance I might even be overestimating or how much I'm underestimating the uh, electorate shifting to the right. It could be higher, but that's why I like having my demographic model and having my national popular vote trend model because I can account for that in the model too. And so right now she's uh, he's up by three or four points in Michigan. And now looking at Nebraska second, He's up there too. I mean, he's up in Nebraska second by about a point. And the district was redrawn to be more Republican friendly. And we see Maine, Virginia, New Mexico. At best, you know, a three-point victory in Maine. Something like that. I mean, it's about there and not even. It's a little bit over two. Virginia, I mean, it's a little bit better than Maine. Like a tiny bit better. Uh, Virginia and New Mexico actually have the same exact margin, believe it or not, in this forecast. They're actually voting about the same. A give or take which if we actually go over here and check them out 
literally a 2.6 percentage point victory in each state. So again, not really a good sign if those states all voted for Joe Biden by roughly 10 to 11 points each. And you see New Mexico trending to the right because it's an 11 point victory here. And now it's only a two and a half point win. So it's basically trending a point to the right. And Virginia and Maine, I mean, roughly give or take, you, you're seeing this. Guys, it, they are shifting with the nation right now. And it is not a good look for Kamala Harris to be doing only two point victories in all of these states where Biden won them by over at least nine points. And now looking at Minnesota, that's a till margin, including New Hampshire. I mean, guys, they're, they're going to be close. Anybody that's telling you that Minnesota's over a three-point win for Harris or New Hampshire is just completely either misinformed or lying because they're going to come down to a few thousand votes. They're going to be competitive. Last time I had them going to Donald Trump, the only reason why they're not going to him now is because the popular vote lead with the new Harris X poll got cut down for Trump by like 0.4%. So now he's up 3.4 in our average. And we also applied a new demographic model, which kind of shifted it to the left. And even with all of that, he's still barely losing these two states. Even when we reweight all the polling data in the state of New Hampshire properly, you know, Jeremiah Watson just did uh, new weightings for all the polling in New Hampshire by weighing to like an R plus nine electorate, which is exactly what it was in 2020. And voter registration for Republicans in New Hampshire is actually netted. So if anything, it's going to be R plus 10, R plus 11. And if that's the electorate, he's for sure winning New Hampshire. I mean, if the electorate's actually R plus 11 or 10, he's going to eke it out in New Hampshire by a tiny bit, but he'll eke it out. And it is now looking good for Harrison. You know, I'm right because... Harris just went there and did a campaign event right before the debate. And on top of that, they're spending ad money in New Hampshire. They're spending money there. So it's like, well, if it was such a big win and if she was such on good pace to win it by as much as Biden did, why is she spending money there? I mean, Biden basically didn't spend any money in New Hampshire. It's because she really is within a couple thousand votes of losing the state, guys. It's just what's going on right now. So looking at my analysis here, Donald Trump is up 313 electoral college votes to Harris's 225, with Minnesota and New Hampshire being the true toss-ups right now. If you guys did enjoy this election forecast analysis, make sure to hit the like button to subscribe if you want more content just like this. And I will see you guys in the next video. Make sure to go ahead and check out betonline.com where you can see the latest odds for the presidential election. Donald Trump is currently the underdog for that race. And when you look, you can also bet on the different state margins. You can also bet on how much of a margin they even go as well. You can vote on swing state parlays, which is interesting. You can also vote on things about Biden. You can vote on the VP debate coming October 1st. And you can also look at governor's races as well as the Senate elections.